Most people think of carbs as only the sort of sugary end ones. They forget that a lot of the healthy carbs are these complicated fibers at the other end. So they throw the baby out with the bathwater. So I'm not having any carbs. It's all rubbish. They're all deadly. Well, that's not true. And could you give me some examples of what those like simple and starchy carbs are? Well, a simple carb is like table sugar. It's like uh, honey, uh, maple syrup. These things, you know, there's nothing. It's just, it's just you and the sugar, right? Coca-Cola, because it's got added sugars to it. So the sodas, they're having um, essentially table sugar or uh, fructose, high fructose corn syrup, which is the sugars extracted from corn, which is virtually identical to table sugar, just a slightly different ratio. Again, a really simple sugar. So these ones give you that instant taste in the mouth. Um, an example of a, of a starch uh, which is like this middle grade, is when you might eat a, a cheese biscuit or cracker. And you put it in your mouth and it's uh, savory. You don't taste any sugar. If you keep it in your mouth, your enzymes in your saliva will break it down. That starch will become into these simple sugars. And after it's been in your mouth about 30 seconds, it will turn sweet. Let me get that straight. You're saying that I might have this cracker, like it's not a sugar, but within 30 seconds of being in my mouth, actually just like the saliva in my mouth has broken that down and turned it into sugar. That's right, yes. And the same thing is if you're having some white rice or you're having a pasta or you're having a potato. They're all starchy carbs, which uh, are transformed fairly rapidly into sugars, but they're not sugar when they start. So it takes a little bit of work for our body to break them down. But often that's done really just in, with our saliva in the early stages of digestion. It doesn't take that much. This is one of the things that most shocked me when I started doing Zoe with you, Tim, because I'd always thought of rice as being this really healthy thing that you know you had with sushi and that was so healthy or you had it with some sort of Asian meal and this was like much better than the food that I'd grown up with. And so I was completely shocked by this story that actually basically it turned into sugar almost immediately. Is that really what happens? Yes, unfortunately it is. What you think is the more synthetic rices like these par the so-called parboiled rices or the Uncle Ben style rice actually happens slightly slower because it's pre-cooked. Uh, it's been cooked in two stages. But most rice, particularly the sticky rices, are really sugars. And that's why in Japan you get these, uh, those, most of their candies are made out of uh, these sticky rice. And it is known for its sweetness. So, yes, white rice is a fantastic example of a very starchy food that converts very quickly into sugar, gives you a sugar spike in your blood, and we'll have those consequences. And we used to think it was healthy. I agree. And, you know, before I got into this, um, that's exactly what I thought as well. And Tim, could you explain a little bit what makes it unhealthy? So you've described the way that, you know, either you're just literally eating something with sugar in it, or you're eating one of these starches and you're saying it turns into sugar fast. What goes on that makes that then unhealthy for us? It's the way we react to the sugar rather than necessarily the sugar itself, which is bad because you know, our ancestors were you know, seeking out honey and other things uh, with great relish. So when you have a, a sugary drink or a soda or a, some ro a bowl of rice, white bread, you will see after about 30 minutes a sugar spike in your blood. So your blood glucose levels will be going up very fast and you can see these in these glucose monitors that anyone who's done Zoe will, will know about. And it varies in people how long and how high those sugar spikes are. But that then triggers production of insulin by the body to drive it down. And this is actually causing effort to the body. So there's a metabolic effort in doing this. And if this is repeated a lot of the time, it's I, some people find it hard to keep these spikes down. They're very sensitive. And we found this in the Zoe study, if you remember, a few years ago now, tenfold differences between people like you and I in how we respond to a standard meal of a cookie or, or a muffin or whatever it is. So everyone's very different, but the people who suffer with it 
get these really big sugar spikes. That causes metabolic problems. That is working the body really hard all the time. And we think this causes low level inflammation and goes on to lead to metabolic disturbances, increased risk of diabetes and all kinds of other consequences, as well as short term ones, which we also showed it can make you hungrier. So that's the sort of real the catch 22 here is, yeah, OK, you have your little sugary snack to relieve hunger. What does it do? Gives you a sugar spike. Maybe you get a dip after it. You're even hungrier, so you're eating more during the rest of the day. So long-term and short-term consequences of having sort of free sugars everywhere without real food to, in a way to help mop it up. Every time I hear this story, it always slightly blows my mind, Tim. It's this idea that like eating the food now might actually make me eat more food later. You know, it's the exact opposite of how I was brought up. And I was thinking about this with my my wife, you know, this morning, who has this very strong view that absolutely, you know, my daughter mustn't leave the house without having to have a good breakfast, even when she's not very hungry. Because like, well, you know, how could she possibly, you know, go to school if she's not hungry? And I think about this idea that obviously you don't want anyone to go to school hungry, but there is this weird thing that eating the wrong food, as you're describing, might actually make me hungry again in two hours' time. And is this real science? Because it sounds crazy. Yeah, it sounds very weird. And it's against everything we've been taught by our parents. Uh, but it's absolutely true. And we've shown this in our Zoe studies, quite consistently, that people who have these big spikes and the dips afterwards, three hours later, they're consistently hungrier than people that don't. And they will consistently overeat, you know, by about 10 to 20%. Uh, over the day compared to people who aren't having those sugar spikes. So it, it's now well known in, in the scientific literature. And it, it's one of the big dangers of you know, not worrying about sugars.